Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the second chapter of this series, which is building up an e-commerce website. So, like as I discussed in my previous video, today we will be working on Spurt Commerce. So, what exactly is Spurt Commerce? Spurt Commerce is an open source platform which gives you an already built up uh, content management system for like shopping cart, but like on the latest technologies such as Angular and then we have Node.js and then we have MySQL. So uh, today basically like we will <coughs> see up uh, this particular software, we will see it like how we need to open up an editor and like how we need, need to like uh, see up this these scripts like and like what kind of scripts they are. So similarly like you will be having answer to all of these questions in this particular video. So in short, we will be downloading Spurt Commerce. Then we will see the architecture of Spurt Commerce. Then we will see what is Node.js. Then we will see how to work with Microsoft Visual Studio. So this is what like we will be using out here, and like most of the people use out in the in the industry. <coughs> sorry, uh, for like uh, coding up JavaScript. So either people use Atom or it is Microsoft Visual Studio, which I always prefer. So, uh, like, you just need to go to install Microsoft Visual Studio. You just need to go to Google and just say download Visual Studio code. So, you will have to make sure that you type this word code because uh, Visual Studio code is different than Microsoft Visual Studio for .NET programming. That is different. So, you need to type in code and hit an enter. So this will take you up to this page and here obviously you can download the exe file which is the windows one and after that you will get the exe file then double click on it next 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 and this will be downloaded. In the similar fashion like you will ha also have to download uh, uh, one more thing which is mysql server. So you will have to say mysql server and say download and here you will find the community version you should always go for the community version that is the free one so it will take me up to this page and here you need to download this like windows you can download this zip file this should have one installer msi installer this is the one so it says that go to the mysql installer for windows go to this page okay so you go to this page and after that, you can just download this version, which is the 32 bit version. You can download it and run it. So, for MySQL, we have some prerequisites. So, you have to even like install C uh, distributable packages and like few other things. So, I have already prepared up a video on MySQL. So, you can go ahead and see the installation part uh, over there. So after like uh, installing MySQL server, you also need to install MySQL Workbench, which might be the part of your installation itself. So how exactly this looks? So on your system, if you go to services, so how did I reach here? Here on search, if I just type services, so this is the one which is responsible for seeing all the services. Just click on services and you will see up this particular window in this window, you will find all the services of your system. So if you just scroll down and let me scroll more down, more, 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 more. So in M, I should find MySQL here. So this is the MySQL server. So this alone justifies that server is running. The state is running, right? And this is the services service which is running. But this is MySQL workbench. This software, this piece of software has actually connected to this software, which is this. And as this resides on the local, that's why like we say it this way that uh, this is a lo local installation of the software. So you're not running it on cloud, your server is not situated anywhere else. For this tutorial purpose, you need to set up this on your laptop, on your local. So. This particular thing, if you see out here, if I go to my home page, you can see that we have welcome screen for MySQL workbench. So when you will install MySQL, you will get this workbench as well. And here you can just say 
on click on the plus button and it will open up and like ask for the connection so in over here in host name you have to put in local host because the server resides on your system what is server this is server my sql 80 this is the thing which is this server so this server now like this workbench will connect to this server and like i have given all my passwords and everything so after that like i have already prepared up something like this if i just go to edit connection i can see that there is like a lot of uh, information out here like i am working on local host the port which is used by mysql is 3306 so any software which is running on your system and like it needs to be part of the network so how a software is reachable by a HTTP request, it requires an IP address and the port. So this you can consider as the IP address. So this IP address can also be resolved as names. So here I can also say 127.0.0.1. This IP address itself means local host. So previously it was local host. Let me say 127.0.0.1 and just say test connection. So it is successful. You can see the, uh, the connection is successful. So this way you are making sure that the MySQL software or server is running and on the same machine you are also taking up the client. You can also see that you can see the client or maybe you can download only the workbench on some other system and this piece of software, this, this service on some other system. So, so that like you can reach up the system from some other system. So like this is a part of network uh, computer architecture, I would, I would say. So I even have a video on computer architecture where like you, you will find up a video saying that how exactly a request reaches a system in MNCs. So this is where like you will get the answer out for this question. So just to continue on this part, uh, here working, we, are, we will be working up with Visual Studio, so you need to install Visual Studio. Similarly, seeing like when you will see the architecture, you will know that any uh, e-commerce website will also require a database server. Here in this case, it is MySQL, and that's why like we need to install it. Then we will review the code, and then we will like install Node.js server, and at last we will see what exactly is a TypeScript. So let us now see of the architecture of commerce. So this is a software which is built on Angular, Node and MySQL. So the database is MySQL, we have already talked about it, like how you need to install it. Then you need to install Node.js. So how would you install Node.js? So everything you can install on the same system. So when it will go to the like production environment, we will have this MySQL on a separate machine. Then we will install Node.js Node on the separate machine. And like there is no need to install Angular directly. Angular is installed via Node.js. And like Node.js manages Angular. You can understand this way as of now. So there is a prerequisite for this tutorial. We assume that you understand HTML, CSS, and like have little bit knowledge on JavaScript and Bootstrap. So even though if you do not have this knowledge, I would try to make sure that we build up this tutorial in a way which can be understood from beginners to advanced level. So uh, here, over here you will have to install Node.js and like there is no need to install HTML. It is already there in your browser. No need to install CSS, no need to install JavaScript and Bootstrap. So all of these things are already there in your browser. So uh, what you need to install is you need to install Node.js. So you need to just go to Google and say download Node.js. So this will bring up to this page here. You can again install the MSI for like Windows. So this will install the MSI, then you can like just double click it. This is an exe next, 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 and this will get installed. How can you check if node is correctly installed or not? So you can just go to the command prompt and let me just zoom in my screen. And here on the command prompt, for command prompt you can type in uh, node dash dash version. You should also check for npm dash dash version. 
So you see the version of my node is this and the version of my npm is this. What is npm? npm is node package manager. So every software is built up in a form which has its own packages. For example, Java has jar files. Python has its own py files. I am not sure about it. But again, like every language has its own files in the same way like node has javascript files. So again, how exactly node was built, it is very important for you to understand the history of node so that you will also understand why it was built and like how it should be used. So we will just talk about it in some way. So as of now, you should understand that you have installed node on your system. And after installing node, you can install angular using npm. So you just have to say npm install and then add the rate angular slash the version of the angular or just say latest. So like it will just download and install the latest angular available in the market. So why all these things ha are happening with respect to node? Let us talk about it now. So what, what exactly is JavaScript? So JavaScript is a language which is written and like stored a file of JavaScript will be stored on the server. So in this architecture, if you say that you write up a JavaScript file, say .js file. And if you include types into it. So as of now, just like you can just learn this word that there is something called as types. Types is nothing but like you can say the type of a variable. A variable can be a type of int, it can be a type of string, it can be a type of boolean. So in JavaScript, we just mention the name of the variable, say where a equal to 5 or where a equal to, we can uh, like uh, assign it a string abc. So in JavaScript, like the variable is not defined to a type, but like there were some uh, issues with this, like which was happening in compile time and that's why like they introduce something called as TypeScript. So there is again a command called as TCS. So here on my CMD, if I just go over here and say TCS dash dash version, maybe I'm not sure. So it is not recognized as an internal or external command might be. So let me just go to Google and ask him command for TypeScript to JavaScript. So I can just go to any of the link. If I scroll down, you have to say npm install and then the command is tsc, not tcs. It is tsc. I'm not sure if it is already installed, but tsc dash dash version. So it is not installed. So I will have to install it. So how do I install it? Let us install it so that you get an example of how things work with node. So I will go to this page again and let me say copy, come back over here. Let me just paste it. So here you are asking the node package manager that npm please install dash g is for globally. So we will talk about what is global and local in our upcoming chapters. As of now understand dash g is global and say we are saying that please install this TypeScript globally and I will just hit an enter. So as I will hit an enter like it will start installing this package. So you can assume, assume it in this way that it is like getting up your jar file. So in Maven you get up a jar file here when you uh, type in npm install dash g typescript it, it is getting up your typescript package. Now if you see that it has installed this typescript package and now if I say npm dash tsc tsc dash dash version so you see that the, we have the version of tsc. So tsc is nothing but like we can convert uh, like typescript file into javascript like they have 85% of the structure same it is the same language. The only difference is when you define some variable say where a after that you put up a colon something like this so we can say where a 
and then colon and say integer. So this variable a will be of type integer. So as of now we have discussed about, about one thing which is like we are saying we are converting TypeScript to JavaScript. So the conversion is easy. You can say that TypeScript is nothing but JavaScript which has one additional property that it defines the type of a variable. So when you have to convert TypeScript to JavaScript, you can easily convert it because in JavaScript, you do not need to know the type of the variable. It can contain anything. But if there is a JavaScript, let's assume the vice versa to TypeScript, then what will happen? So if we have a Java code, say where A and we assign it 10, and now we have to convert it to TypeScript. So we cannot convert it to TypeScript, right? Why? Because we need the type of this variable, which is A. So how to do this? Because like we are saying that TypeScript is superset of JavaScript. So it should be able to use all the JavaScript files as well. So this is what like, this is the assumption and this is right. You can use the JavaScript files in TypeScript, but how? So there is something like people have already developed. They have created up a file which is called, called as types. So after typing up this file, you will you will say that this file is, say for example, the name of this file is abc.js and it contains only this code. And after this, it has a code which is the console.log a. You are just logging in a, right? So then there will be a file called as types abc and in this file, you will say that there is a variable a and this variable is of type integer. So I'm just giving you a context saying like what is a file which is of types like uh, you will encounter a lot of files which will be some something like this at the rate types and then file name. So what does this mean? So this is nothing but the types of the variable which are included in a JS file so that you can convert this JavaScript and use it into TypeScript. So hope, hope this makes sense to you like what exactly is JavaScript, what exactly is TypeScript and how exactly we are going to use it. So the next part like which I told you which is very important for you to understand is like uh, what is the history of Node.js. So why, why Node.js was built? So previously what, what used to happen is whenever you used to write a JS file, so it you, you used to write this JS file on the server and even it used to get stored on the server. So it used to get stored on the server. But whenever it, it was like called, there was an HTTP request called, a get request was called, this file used to completely go to this particular machine. And in this machine, this file used to get executed by the browser. So it is your browser which can ex execute few things. And how you can see that I can just go to more tools and then go to developer tools. So you can even press like control shift I or you can go up to this place via these three dots and then uh, this uh, more tools and here developer tools. So you can just go and click over here and in developer tools, you will find something called as elements. So you can see that this is nothing but a software, this particular, any, any uh, like web browser, may it be Chrome, may it be Google, may it be Safari, any web browser, like what they do is they have the capability of compiling a high level language. And what those high level language are, those are HTML, those are CSS and those are JavaScript. So I, I have already prepared up a deep tutorial like it is only of two hours or of three hours. You will not have to spend like uh, like 10 hours or 12 hours to understand these languages. So you can go ahead and like see the, those videos which are on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It explains how exactly this is a client side language. So that's why like I'm saying that's why it is called as client side language because this browser executes this these languages, right? So after after like you have uh, like this this framework which is Angular and which is built on JavaScript, why exactly this is required? So for example, 
why angular is required is for example if i go to my facebook.com and here when when i type in my mobile number and when i type in my password or when you can say that when i type in my email id so an email id has a specific format so you do not want to send a request to the server with the data and like ask the server like please uh, like tell me if this is a right email id you will type in a code and that code will be executed by the browser so in which language you will type in this code you will type this code in javascript because javascript will come back to the browser and it will execute this code over here itself and it will say that this email address uh, like format is incorrect so that's why like we are like because this javascript is being executed on the browser we say it as client side language so previously javascript like only browsers were able to execute javascript but the servers were made with languages such as dotnet or maybe python django then uh, we have like uh, springs for java servlets again for java so people used to write up their uh, backend with php right so these were the languages which were being used so if someone has to create a three tier architecture such as this where you have the presentation layer which is nothing but your browser then you have the logical layer again some code running on the system and then you have the database which saves all your data right some you need to run up a three tier architecture so people you have like uh, people used to learn two languages they used to learn javascript then they used to learn one server side language such as php or maybe some other language so here here like there was a revolution created because now if you want to develop the entire end to end system you can develop it by learning only one language that is javascript so what what the person did like the person who created node he picked up the compiler or interpreter so i am not sure how how like javascript like this uh, it is if it is compiler interpret i need to check on this but obviously you can go ahead i am giving you the concept so it just pick the compiler or interpreter of this browser and it placed it on your system so it placed it on your system now if you like uh, create a javascript.js file on your system you can execute this .js file from your system not the browser now the browser will not execute it you can execute this particular js from your system and as you can be like uh, you can execute it from your system you can create a server out of it so now you can say that you are creating a server using node js you are creating your front end language and i have already told why front end is required i just give you an example of email id so if email id you do not want to spend a lot of time these are performance ethics you do not like want your server to be low overloaded right so you want things to happen faster for your end user so if a request goes to the server server caters the request obviously that can happen but it will be a time consuming job so you are just writing up a javascript code which will be executed then and like here itself on the browser itself and it will tell this format is not correct so this was like an overview of the architecture and like why angular is required why node is required why we have chosen mysql so we have chosen mysql because it is the most easiest database and like the most uh, like i will not say scalable but yes durable database even like the free database and like we can take it to any level we want so what is now the advantage of angular so when you know that you have written a, you, you can write up a code like for this uh, browser and like you can make that code execute on browser rather than your server so what you will do is like you will just create up a framework for your websites so this is what like has already already been given by spurt commerce for a specific domain that is e-commerce website so basically you will get out more details on things like what is this framework and like how angular is used we will talk about everything in detail up by like uh, in this upcoming course but as of now my intention was to give you a brief so i understand like you should be capable of like Uh, knowing all these things because i have already told you that i already have a tutorial for like 2 hours or 3 hours for all these things you can go ahead and see that i will recommend it to you before you go ahead and watch up this video on angular node and mysql now let us see something about 
spot commerce so let us go ahead and see how to download and like work on spot commerce so this is basically the website of spot commerce you can just go to spotcommerce.com and here you will find like a lot of things you just can go to technology and see up the architecture or the technology stack maybe so i will just click on the technology stack so if i just scroll down it shows us what all files are like being used what all packages in the sense you can say what all jar files in java are being used what all libraries are being used so these are the libraries which are being used express js is something which is an extension to node uh, it helps to create a web server in a better way again typescript we installed the, this typescript using npm command like in this chapter itself here so this is again like we have discussed from from converting java to typescript typescript to java so this is why this is required this is nothing but the monitoring this is a file which is for monitoring the node server then we have jwt which is for java web token so this is for your initial uh, like uh, tran like uh, you can say commencement of your uh, like talking between the browser and the server so when a browser creates a session with the server and uh, like when you log when you log in so while you log in you require some kind of credentials so those credentials are now in nowadays being like used up as java web tokens and this is why like this library is there we have micro framework w3 tech what is this this is a framework which defines the initial loaders so what exactly we are doing in node js in node js we are creating up our apis so all of our architecture is built over http like our browser so you people should know this thing that this browser always work on http protocol so there is an endpoint http endpoint so we will see these endpoints so using that you can throw up a request of http it can be of type get post put uh, delete so similarly like uh, you can put up any kind of request http request and for that kind of request you get a response so in majority of the cases it will be a get request or post request if you understand these two request i think that you can say that you have covered 75% of http in a way which is being used practically obviously not as per the theoretically but the practical aspects of http relies in these two uh, request types only mostly so uh, this is a micro tech framework but what does this framework do this framework defines the initial loaders for your node js servers so when you say that when you are starting up your machine what all files should get triggered so this you can interpret it something like this so when you will see the code you will understand things more we have routing controllers this is something which is used over express js and routing controllers are used to control your endpoints so when you say that you have something called as www.host-tune-perform.com slash uh say product slash product id something product id and this returns you the uh, product description so type orm what exactly is type orm so in dot net we have entity data and in java uh, we have hibernate so these are nothing but the orms what is an orm orm something which says you write up the node server like when we say that we have an architecture like this so there are two kinds of communication communication happening one is between client and server and second is between application server and database server so when application server and database server like uh, talks with each other they have to talk in a language which is defined by the database so when node will contact my sql it will have to talk in sql terms say select star from abc and like it will have to use the libraries of mysql so people came up with an framework which which can like where you do not have to change up the code of your node server so even if you change this database from mysql to mongo server so 
this code on near node just over will not change you just need to change a parameter which will say the database type is now mongo instead of mysql and it will create the uh, tables or the collections for mongo by itself so this is nothing but an orm so just give you to give you a brief and like this is what is being served by hibernates and entity data in like hibernates in java entity data in .NET. So we have class validator. Class validator is something which you put up uh, to see something on the front end, like a class where you can say that if a class has a variable a, so above that you will define a decorator saying at the rate not null. So this particular uh, variable for any uh, like uh, class object which is being instantiated, it cannot be null. I'm just giving you an example. Bycrypt is crypting like technology API doc is nothing but it maintains the API documentation. So uh, when when like in uh, like real world, there is not a single person who is creating up your application. There are multiple people. So for, so for say instance, like I have 20 people out of them, like five are developers and like three are testers and rest all is management. So these five people developed the system and then they have to tell the testers to test the API, maybe through Postman. So they will not give them the code or like they, how will you, they brief them? How many APIs are there? Would they create a separate document or Word document? So this is what like the API docs come, comes into picture. In, in comment sections, you have to define some at the rate and the variable name and then the value. So as per those values, the documentation is created by itself. So this is a must use uh, like library in any matured framework. AWS SDK is something which you need to use when you are like uh, deploying this tool on AWS. I think so, I've not used it. So then we have EJS and like similarly other components like NG, RX store, this will be used with the Angular. So I am not discussing all of them in the detail as of now. Uh, let's focus on like some uh, like few uh, libraries. So I will just give you a difference. Something which starts with Angular is an Angular library. So here you have Angular router. So what is the difference between Angular router and routing controller? So Angular router is something which, which will do the routing on the browser itself. So no request will be sent, but still this URL will get changed. So understand my point. So this URL will get changed something like this, changed URL. And when you hit an enter, it will take you to another page, but it is not getting the results from the server. This is the like a beauty of Angular or React or a single page application. It allows routing on browser level. So you do not have to go to the server. So Lodash is something which is used with arrays. It, it like simplifies your tasks of arrays. Hammer.js is for animation in JavaScript. Uh, similarly, this is a store for like, uh, like obviously like we are using ngrx store for like uh, defining up and like making up our part of e-commerce. So you can consider it as a store which will have various states and if a product goes into this state or this state, so like it, it, it will matter. So we will just discuss about this in more detail. As of now, just try to understand that this is a library which we, which we will use up with Angular. But this is not Angular specific library. And this is not even e-commerce specific library. This is a store which has its own states and like you can change up the states using the actions and like various things. These are ngrx charts. So when you say that you are building up an e-commerce website, you need an admin panel. And this is where like this uh, particular charts will help you out to show the admin how much was your sales like what kind of users are coming in, you can build it any way you want. But the point which I want you to understand is you can see that NGX charts, NGX translate core and NGX database are somehow related to each other. So whatever it is, it can be anything, but you can at least get an idea of what kind of libraries are being used and all of them are JavaScript, even for the Node.js server coding and even for the Angular coding. So these these all are either JavaScript or TypeScript. So this is the main advantage. You just need to understand and learn one language to create entire database. So even 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 this entire application, not the database. So even like this type ORM is something like which takes care of the database part as well. 
so like there are a lot of advancements being happening in the industry the point is you people should understand the implementation of a particular language and like how architecture is being built so this is something which even developers performance engineers manual testers automation testers should understand to get a better hold on the technology then again like you people should know about jquery if if like you are very prone to technology so jquery is also a framework on javascript so you can use up j like this particular thing is being also used up so why do people always like include jquery so you can you can say this thing like there will be a lot of third party libraries which you are using and these libraries might itself in themselves use jquery so in in npm we have a way out to like resolve this issue as well so say for example there is some library which has not been included over here but is being used by say class validator it is using it this a library which is not included out here so how how will that library be installed so like that is installed by the package.json file so in node.js you like in maven you write all of these things in xml in node.js you write in java like a uh, json format in package dot like uh, json so there you write all the libraries which are required and all of them get extra extracted automatically and who does this job npm does this job like in java it is done by maven in like for automation engineers for people who work with selenium they use a lot of maven so in java it is done using maven over here it is done using npm so uh, in a similar way like we will have a package dot json for the entire project and these particular modules these are nothing but modules these modules will itself have their own package dot json so this way when we we are saying that install class validator so it will install class validator and as class validator has its own package dot json it has its own dependencies so the dependencies which are used by class validator might have their own dependencies so this way the hierarchy goes on of of dependencies so this 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 is the also reason like when some error occurs in your framework regarding to dependencies sometimes it become very hectic and like a very difficult task to resolve but yes you first you need to understand how exactly the hierarchy moves on so this was basically about like uh, the architecture of uh, sput commerce and like how exactly is it is built and this also defines the fact why you can choose up this platform to build up your like e-commerce servers because like this will be fast it is using angular this has you have to learn one one language your your all of your like development team like requires just one language so they can be more productive then uh, you can say that it has like uh, a various features like it is also already saving up your a lot of time because it is giving you the open source platform for free so i have like seen a lot of uh, articles on this but i did not find anything else which is completely free even this software spot commerce if you go to their website this is the download page i will tell you how to reach up this download page so you can see that this is the community version but you cannot download it for free it says only for members so the, it it like actually takes 99 dollars from you and then you are available to download this community version open source community version once you get it you can distribute it anywhere that does not matter but if you do not have a friend which already have it you cannot download this version for free the only version which is like for free is 3.0.1 and this is the reason like i chose up this version and like i wanted you be, you people to start up with this version because if you even if you start up with this version you can create anything by your own even in this version you get at least 5000 hours of like a work man work already done and like i accept it this is what is being claimed by sput commerce and i accept it because i actually saw the code i am running it and like i feel like this is brilliant so and this was the reason like i picked up this particular software for like for this tutorial so how do you exactly download this uh, like uh, reach up to this page you need to go to google uh, say downloads with commerce 
the first link after going to the first link you will have to click on this download option and here you will have to fill up this form and click on download community version so after you fill up this form you will get an email something like this here you will have this download button so when you click on this download button you will reach up to this page and on this page you will not be able to download anything else other than version 3.0.1 one thing i want you to brief out here today itself is like this particular version is not built up on latest node so you can see that the latest node uh, like i have installed 14.15 0.3 but the latest version can be something else but this does not support the latest angular and node version you can see up it says that it is supporting node 14 so even this version is not supporting the angular uh, even angular 10 so as of now we have angular 14 i guess or 13 but this does not even this particular like 3.0.7 i did had words with put commerce sales guys and they told me that this does not support uh, like angular uh, like the latest version it supports angular 7.2 i guess or maybe maybe some like uh, some other sub release of 0.7 version i don't remember it correctly but absolutely like it is not the latest version even there like uh, like there uh, main uh, premium packages they also support angular 10 so anyhow it does not matter a lot this was just for your knowledge so this is how you can download this particular software so as you will download this software you will find a file something like this so if i just extract this file in front of you so this file will have various other folders right let me extract this file for you so this file has these two folders one is this this is the one which you would need to get in this is not for you this is for mac people so you just need to get into this particular thing here you have this sql right so at first just edit it copy it so i assume that you must have already uh, like installed mysql so you need to go to mysql workbench connect to your uh, server and here you will have to create a database so i created a database so you can also create up a user again you can google and see how we can create up a user on uh, on mysql i'm just giving you the crux so i already had a user i like changed the password of my user then i granted this user privileges to this unit and you can take a screenshot so either way like these are few only few commands which will be used up so then we have this unit and database and in database you see that we already have all these tables so how i got these tables you just need to go to new sql paste up the code the code which we copied up from this file so just copy the code from this file come to your uh, server which was this and here say control a everything will be selected and just hit this button so i have already created up this so i do not intend to create it now but if you will just hit this button all of them will be created up you will also have the sample data the first thing is this which you need to do so this will set up your database server second is like setting up your node js so inside this you have three folders so i will just explain you what are these three folders this is the api folder and this is where your node js server resides so if i just open it so in this we have source and you can see that we have all ts files so even if i go to any one of them say if i go to my uh, libraries rather let's go to the apis this is what has the actual code if i go to controller you can see we have all ts files dot ts files all in one language go to any folder this is for git keep this is for your uh, repository management so that is something different if i go to request all ts files again so if i go out this is our angular code source and admin both of them our are our angular code so even if i go into this code so either you will find dot json if i go to the source and again you will find out dot ts or html or css so we have already discussed or css so what is the difference between css and scss this is what 
which we will be going to discuss in the next chapter so stay tuned and please do subscribe our channel this was anand goel from host-tune-perform.org thank you guys have a great day